Welcome to this Thursday edition of Your Day. We'll learn about a new park that has earned the City of Simpsonville an award from the Municipal Association of South Carolina. Donna London talks today with Mayor Dennis Waldrop about Heritage Park and about Schmooney, the Simpsonville mascot. Berkeley County Lead Extension Agent Mark Arena visits with Brad Sale, Environmental Education Coordinator at the Old Santee Canal State Park. And then we'll continue our observance of National Diabetes Month by opening our phone lines to give listen to the Jim Self Center, the City of Simpsonville, and to other resources mentioned on our program at our website, yourday.clemson.edu. We'll travel now to a low country state park with Berkeley County Lead Extension Agent Mark Arena. Well, it's a pleasure to be in Berkeley County, South Carolina, and we're sitting here at the old Santee Canal Park, and I'm here with Brad Sales, who's the Environmental Education Coordinator for the park. Brad, tell us a little bit about your background and where you came from, please. All right. Um, I'm originally from Kentucky, and uh, born and raised in the same house there, and then took uh, summer vacations every year d down to South Carolina and to Florida and Georgia. And then uh, ever since I was younger, I've always wanted to live um, down here in the south and so when I graduated high school I w um, went to school at Coastal Carolina University okay. got my uh, degree in marine science and biology and then from there um, I've just been traveling around doing a lot of environmental education picking up uh, different experiences at, at different points and uh, after five years of that I finally am here at, in Berkeley County at, uh, at the park. Okay. And how long have you been with the park staff now? Um, I'm brand new. I actually started at the very beginning of uh, July, so my first day was uh, July 2nd. Yeah. All right. So is your love education? Is it nature? Is it biology? I mean, it seems like you might have a mixture of all these things. And... Right, right. Um, primarily what I studied in college was just sciences and not necessarily how to educate people about it, um, but just learning about science. However, my family is all educators. My mom um, is a retired kindergarten teacher. My dad is a retired uh, science middle school teacher. My sister is a special education teacher. So just growing up in that environment, you know, naturally I'm slanted um, towards the educator. And, and when I graduated college, that's what I really started to trying to figure out what I wanted to do with all this knowledge that mm -hmm. I gained in college. And, and I've really just enjoyed being able to share. And I've always loved to share um, my knowledge with other people and, and to get information from other people as well. And so I kind of went that avenue um, after graduating college. I really started to focus on educating in the sciences. Yeah. Now, now the, the educational programs you're going to be bringing to the park and the community, what's your philosophy? Is, is, is it more hands-on or is it uh, you know, t t tr traditional lecturing? or? Right. How are your goals going to be met? It's, it's primarily going to be hands-on. Um, what I've understood in the past five years of educating is that different students learn in different kinds of modes. Um, some students learn by reading, some people by, by teaching, by doing, by hearing and seeing. And so when I design a program, I keep all those different modes of learning in mind. And then um, so I try to incorporate all of those. So if I, you know, no matter who my audience is, however they learn best is going to appeal to them as well. So I try and hit all those different modes so that they can get the most out of what I'm teaching them. And I know you've only been here a short period of time, but have, have you launched an educational program yet? Have you actually? I've taught a few programs for our summer camp that we have here, um, okay. mainly dealing with the uh, snakes and turtles that we have here, um, the live exhibits that we have here at the park with our summer camp. And I've just now completed the school environmental education programs and I'm starting to do um, and starting to plan and solidify a lot of the weekend programs um, special events as well. Okay. Now there's been a lot of kind of guess discussion over the years it seems like a lot of the, our youths have lost perspective of nature and the outdoors and this the, the computer ev revolution evolution that's in front of us has taken them out of the the natural settings and are you, are you finding that true, or are you seeing that there's still an interest with, with, it, with outdoors nature? Um, unfortunately, I, I, I do believe it to a certain extent. Um, a, lot of, a, a lot of children, you know, with, with all the different kinds of video games, all the computer um, I improvements and in, in, uh, online things that, that children can do and all the TV shows, um, I found that stu students and um, people out in the public tend 
to focus mainly on and, and, and be able to do those programs instead. But what I've done is I've tried to connect mm -hmm. that the programs with um, something in, in re reference what the kids may learn. So um, I used to do an invertebrate um, uh, class, and then I'd have all the kids name all the SpongeBob characters, mm -hmm. and then and then go into all the all the different types of SpongeBob characters and and what they are in real life. Whether you know talk about Mr. Krabs, and, and you start talking about ar arthropods and and talk about SpongeBob, and then talk about what sponges really are, and things like that. So I try and reference and, and use what the kids are doing these days to, to kind of open them up to nature and outside as well. A uh, rewarding part about being a, a, an education is, is just seeing the emotional joy of, of our youth and adults when they, when they actually connect with something you've taught. Can you share one of those experiences with us? Um, definitely, uh, and, and we, even when I was younger, the um, I, I just remember being, um, you know, j just being enlightened and just feeling, just feeling absolutely amazed by by all the things that I've learned, and just whenever you have a have a snake in your hand and you're and you're presenting it, I mean, every child's read in the book all about snakes and you know they're, you know, they, they don't have any legs and they have scaly skin and all of that, but to actually put a snake in their hand for the first time, you can tell the the children that have never held a snake before. And, um, and, and, and to see their eyes light up is just amazing. And also, you know, you have the children that have held the snakes before and they're real confident. And then the first time I bring a snake around, um, a child may not want to touch it at all, and that's fine. Um, that's their choice. But the more that I talk about it and the more th th that I'm holding it and the more that they see their, their classmates or other people holding it, then to have th those children even just touch the snake, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go back to them and and uh, give them a second opportunity and to have those children the second time around um, is real rewarding for me. And uh, the, the, the beauty and power of education is, number one, it eliminates a lot of the misnomers out there, like snakes are slimy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. second of all, when you've gained that experience, I think it's something you never forget. So I mean, it, it sounds like a really rewarding thing what you're doing here. And we hope you have a bright future and everything else. Is there anything else you'd like to touch on before we close up here and encourage people? Or um, just just come out to the park. We we love to have uh, visitors stop in. And uh, one of the most rewarding things for me, and the reason that I'm in this field, is to learn as well. We um, there's a, a statistic out there that you uh, learn 90% of what you teach. Mm -hmm. And so um, we encourage people to come out here. Um, I've already had a lot of people come in with uh, digital pictures that they took wh while on their hike and asking, you know, what's this spider, what's this turtle, and uh, what is this plant? And so um, I might know, I might not know, and and e be even better if I don't know, because then I'll go back, mm -hmm. and then um, we can learn together. And so that's the best way that I uh, that that I learn is just by teaching. And mm -hmm. so um, we encourage people to come out to the park, um, try and stump us, you know, we like that. And so. Yeah. Well, just, I mean, the old Santee Canal Park is located in Berkeley County. It doesn't mean it's limited to the Berkeley County residents. I mean, how, how, do, how can people get in touch with the park, and how can they find out about the edu educational opportunities you have to offer them? Absolutely. We have a website, um, oldsanteecanalpark.org, that you can go and check the um, historical programs that we offer and the environmental education programs that we offer. Um, we also have uh, special events on weekends that we do as well, and it's, it's definitely open to anyone that wants to come out here to Monk's Corner and check it out. We, we encourage everybody, um, the more the merrier. And okay. so, um, well, great, Brad. We appreciate talking with you today and wish you a lot of success. Great. Thank you very much.